glory to the name of Jesus Christ, the most high God. We thank you, Lord, for today, for this day, this hour, this very moment. We thank you for pouring out your spirit into this place. And we thank you for opening the doors to this sanctuary, Father God. And we know that all those that are connected and affixed to us through the social media and through the correspondence and standing in the gap in spirit and in truth, Father God, all the folks that are coming before you, Father God, we worship you today. We thank you all for coming before the Lord. And we know that the glory of the Lord is upon us. We know this because he got us up today. And because he got us up today, he has ordained us to give us a gift of praise. And so, Father God, we just thank you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your encouragement. And we thank you for your presence. As we go into the word of God today. Just turn me down just a little bit. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Anyone dwelling in the house of the Lord today, wherever your respective place of worship is, you are dwelling in the house of the Lord. For if you have the Lord Jesus, if you have God the Father, if you have the Spirit, the Godhead, right? Uh, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Godhead. If you have His Word and He has you, you're having a meeting engagement. You're having church. So I just ask that you shake loose all those things that have bound you, all those things that have chained you, and have worship service like never before him. For the Lord is your shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. Can we proclaim that individually today? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be at want. Can we just make that our heart's desire today? And then corporately and collectively, can we come together and say, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. That means deliverance is in the air, right? Uh, forgiveness is in the air today, right? Restoration is in the air. Resuscitation is in the air. Healing is in the air. We're free today and independent of the sin that incarcerated us from so long because he has gotten us up today. If that sounds good, let us worship him today as we talked about the spirit and in truth. So walk with me in prayer, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you for opening the doors to our hearts today, Father God. We thank you for your love and for your glory, Father God. We thank you for a service like never beforehand today, Father God, as you bless us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet today, Father God, as we willingly allow you to shepherd us today, Father God. Many have fallen by the wayside, Father God, and many have gone home, Father God. But you have given us this day, this hour, this very moment, Father God, that we might get it right one more time, Father God. But we can't do it on our own, Father God. Having no righteousness of our own, but Father God, we seek out you today, Father God. We look towards the heavenly realm, Father God. For all these things trouble us, Father God, but you have told us to be anxious for nothing, Father God. So we seek you out while you may be found today, Father God. In the midst of great turmoil, in the midst of great struggle, Father God. But we're set free today, Father God. For you have said, who the Son sets free is free indeed. So, Father God, we are independent of this world, Father God. And we are dependent upon you. So, Father God, we are free of the things of this world and set on you, Father God. Let our hearts be ringing yes, on to you, Father God. Let our minds line up 2020 with your word today, Father God. And let us walk in your righteousness as our soul is being prepared for an everlasting, Father God, an everlasting joy that is bubbling inside of us. So, Spirit, have your way, Father God. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this place. Setting free the captives, Father God. Setting free, Father God, that we might be free to worship and free to praise, Father God, today. 
free to receive deliverance today, Father God. We're free to receive increase today, Father God. And as we touch it and agree on you, Father God, we bind up the darkness right now in the name of Jesus. And we send your light, Father God, which your word says that darkness couldn't comprehend it right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we're walking on solid and fertile ground because you said you would go before us and make the crooked places straight, Father God. You would set our path straight, so we're trusting you with all our hearts and leading God on our own understanding. The Father God, acknowledge you in all our ways, Father God, so that you might direct our paths. Yes, so, Father God, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Settle in this place, Father yes, God, Lord. and have your way. In yes, Jesus' God. name, amen. Yes, Lord. And I just challenge you today to praise him like never yes, before. Lord. And as the praise team comes up, I just ask you to respect the place of worship and to glorify his holy name in the name of Jesus. Well, we surrender it all to you. Anybody surrender this morning? Can we just come in on that? We surrender it all to you. Yes, God. Lord, we surrender it all to you. Yes, Lord. We surrender it all to you. Yes, Lord. We surrender it all to you. Hallelujah, God. We don't surrender just this moment, God. But our very lives, we surrender to the King of Kings, God. We thank you for holding us, God. We thank you for keeping us, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are the keeper, and we surrender all. This morning, we surrender our will, Lord. We surrender our way, Father. We surrender, God, to what you want to do in our lives, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that it's not by power, nor by might, but it's by your spirit, God. And so we surrender this morning. Yes, so we surrender to you, Father. We surrender it all to you. Yes, Lord, we surrender, we surrender it all to you. We surrender it all to you. We can trust you, Lord, so we surrender. We surrender it all to you.
Hallelujah, the great I am. We worship you this morning and we exalt you in this place. Thank you for being Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to our local, national, and international audience. As we begin to move towards continuously praising and worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is to be here today. What a blessing it is to just be able to stand firm and say, I love the Lord and he yes, loves yes, me. Yes. It's, and we're able to do that now, saying some, some places you can't do that, some places you have to hide and say it, but we can say it out loud and we can say it publicly. I love the Lord and I stand firm on that yes, and nothing Lord. will be able to make me change that in the name Thank of Jesus. God. So I feel good this morning yes. about bringing the word this morning. I just want to give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I spent time with family. Uh, it was a pleasure to be among them, but when I got back home, uh, Marcellus, uh, he was out just enjoying the pool and I was just sitting uh, watching him do what he do and as we began to just sit and listen to music, the Lord began to download this sermon to me last wow. night and I wow. began to write and, 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 if you, and if you ever uh, uh, have the Lord and talk to you, sometimes we talk fast. Sometimes we tell you fast. So you have to go, slow down, Lord, slow down. I can't, I can't get it like you tell me, but you, you, you begin to become a, a, a shorthand person that you can well, come back later and review what you was talking about. So I just want to give God the praise. He downloaded that last night. And uh, then I come in here this morning and begin to just praise the Lord and, and begin to say thank you, God, for allowing us to have a place that we can come and worship and have the freedom to have the keys to open our own door and come in and give God the praise. So it's an honor, it's just an honor how God has continued to bless us. I think last week I was talking to you about who are you listening to? And as we begin to realize that if we're not listening to God, we're, we're moving in vain. And we're moving in a direction that's gonna hurt us and it's gonna cause us to not receive everything that God says what we should be receiving. I want to update you just before I go into the word. Uh, Federal State University has put me in charge of COVID testing, COVID drive through testing. We, we, we're going to have that event here uh, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday from one to seven. So if you want to get tested, uh, just come on up and just, they'll, we, they, you don't have to go online and register any of that. You just show up, get tested. Your information will be held confidential. It'll be mailed to you, and then you would understand uh, from that point. You know, if you had it or you don't, then go. You know, to the extreme of what you need to do at that point. But starting uh, uh, July the seventh, all the way through December, I'm going to have different sites that I'm going to be telling you where we'll be, so that if you miss Tuesday, Friday will be somewhere else, and the following week will be somewhere else that Tuesday and that Friday. So. If you get the opportunity, I, I want to bring them to us first. So they'll be here, we'll be in the parking, the parking lot, and come on out and get tested, and then let us do that. That's gonna, we're gonna do this between July and December. So I give God the praise and put me in a position that God is gonna give us and bring so more exposure, and that way uh, we can kind of uh, pull the people and guide them into our direction in the name of Jesus. He said, your gift will make room for yourself. I'm depending upon that in the name of Jesus. So without further ado, I want you to turn to the book of 2 Corinthians. Go to the book of 2 Corinthians as I begin to break this word down to you this morning. And after I begin to go back over and read what the Lord has downloaded, it kind of hurt me. Uh, it kind of made me feel sad that, you know, people are at this time in their life are still vexed with this and, and I feel like the Lord is trying to tell us it's not just COVID-19 that has us in trouble my God, my God. there's some other things in our life that has us in trouble but COVID-19 is just a mask that some people are hiding behind so that's the reason why some of our marriages are dissolving and some of relationships people are going in other directions but after you hear me today you don't understand what I'm talking about 
it's 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 a lot going on behind the scenes, saints. And and I just want to give God the praise that we as people can hear from him and he can be our bond in Gilead. He can help us out through this situation. So go to the book of Second Corinthians and we I want to preach to you today, teach to you today, bring to you today, chapter four. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you this morning. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being God in my life, the God of our life, the head of our lives. You're an awesome God. You're an almighty God. I thank you for, for our life up this strength, God, for waking us up this morning. And God, as I sit with family yesterday, I, I hear several deaths happening in the family that I didn't, wasn't aware of. But God, help us through this situation. Help us, God, through the many deaths that's occurring around us, God. Strengthen us like never before. Give us perseverance, God, and give us drive and tenacity to run towards you with all costs, at all costs, run towards you. But thank you this morning, God, for allowing us to be here. Thank you this morning, God, for allowing the memories of listening through by way of Facebook. You said go out to the highway and the byway and compel them to come in. So I thank you, God, that, it, that the internet is there for us, God, to be able to bless your people. Thank you now, God, for what you're about to do this morning. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Ooh, we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And if I had to give you a title for today, it would be broken but not destroyed. Broken but not destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Broken but not destroyed. I want you to hear uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, but stay where you are in chapter 4. I want you to hear this verse as I give you the prerequisites of where I'm going. But, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen. To the glory of God through us. Now he who established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God who also has has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a deposit. We serve an awesome God. Moreover, I call God as a witness against my soul that to spare you I came no more to Corinthians. Now that we have dominion over your faith, but are fellow workers for your joy, for by faith you stand. Yes, God. I want you to understand, by faith, we shall make it. By faith, we shall stand. But I want to read just a little bit of chapter 4 so you can also uh, get the grasp of what I'm trying to uh, bring to you this morning. He said, therefore, since this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced to the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifesting of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is built, it is built to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, shall shine on them. Good God, good God, good God. I said, okay, God, I, hear, I see where you're going. But I want you to understand, broken, but not destroyed. Some of us have been through some horrific battles. Battles we thought we was winning. Struggles we thought we had under control. The opportunity of life was yet upon us. And, and some of the events in our lives were controlled by us. Some wasn't. Our innocence was placed in jeopardy. Predators of evilness thrusted upon us even from childhood. You fought to keep a strong mind, but because you went through, you had to, it had to have been God to bring you through because you should have never made it through what these predators and this evilness had lurched against you. You fought your hardest, you, you both mentally and physically, you walked your strongest, you talked your strongest, you gave your all, but yet you end up broken. This one hurts you. That one hurts you. You thought he was the only one that you could give you all. In fact, you told him, just said, I want to give you my all. And you release your heart because you wanted this relationship to work. 
but he abandoned you and gave what he should have been giving you, he gave to another. Left. You broke. You gave her the best you had to give. Gave her without hesitation. Gave it to her without question. Wanted to be the best thing that ever happened to her. Her past relationships failed. You pushed hard. You aimed high. You gave much. Gave all of you the best you could because you wanted this relationship to work. You wanted to give her what she's never had. Wanted to show her how a real man is conducting himself. But because she never knew how to love, never knew how to be loved, she abandoned you at the height of your emotional love gift. Left you broken. Here I am. What am I to do now? And how can I, an awesome God, come to be your common ground? God, I'm broken. No man can go into battle and be the same. How can my heart be filled with joy? How can I be accepted by God? How can God say that he is my friend? Because I'm broken. My life events has withdrawn. Cause me to become into me. Have me not trusted. Have me meeting people but not letting them in. Because I've been there, did that, and they got the scars to show. Pastor, I'm broken. I, I cry sometimes without realizing I'm, 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 I'm strange and things is hurting. I, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm trying to realize, is this my reality? I need a relief. Pastor, sometimes I even question why I'm still here. Maybe if I get COVID-19 and give it, give in to it, then I could leave and have the excuse to, to leave here, Pastor. My husband can't understand why I can't love him like he needs for me to do. But I'm afraid to give all of me. Pastor, I love her, but I gave everything before. But it ended up showing. She wanted me to be more secure in our relationship, but Pastor, I gave all of me. And before, we're still left broken. How can I rewind this clock of life? Good gracious. How can I ignore this reality of my brokenness? How can I move with a purpose? How can I get past this? I, 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 I even seen great relationships, and I long for that. I see happiness, and I want that. I just want to experience the joy of this king called God. I'm looking in this darkness, and I can't find the mirror of life. I can't see past my hurt. I can't see past my fears. I can't see past my limitations. But I want you to understand Michael 7 and verse 8 says, Do not gloat over me, my enemies, though I have fallen. I will arise, though I sit in darkness. The Lord shall be my light. I can't see past my limitations. I can't see past my doubt. It seems like everything I put my hands to, I come up short. I make up excuses to cover my pain, to mask the hurt, to push past the disappointment. Past is hard to trust now. It's hard to fully care now. I'm broken and I'm hurt. And I want to love. I want to care. I want to build. I want to gather. I want to sow. I want to reap. But I can't get past this brokenness. I have no tears left. I want the real me to come out forward. And Jesus said, I... I said to you, Jesus, I surrender to you. I, I want to love even you, Jesus, and I want to care even for you, Jesus, and I want to trust even you, Jesus, but I don't know how because I'm so broken. Good God. He began to tell me how the people that's calling his name will not release themselves to him because they feel like they are so caught into a cage that they do not have the doors to open to get out of there. And so God began to, 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 to tell me to understand this. He says, tell my people, remember the words that I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will persecute you as well. If they keep my word, they will keep yours as well, says John 15 and verse 20. God says they are going to persecute you. They are going to come against you. They are going to make accusations against you. But that's not to make you become an introvert. He said, because they persecute me, surely they're going to persecute you. But we're, we're in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And he says here at verse 5, he says, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Yes, Lord. And ourselves, your servant, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Mm -hmm. 
who has shown in this heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh oh. Whoa. It is the God who commands light to yes. shine yes. out of darkness. So long we've been in darkness too long, not knowing where to go or who to trust. Afraid to release you to who your significant other is. Living a double life, a double set. Trying to make this thing work. You feel like you're broken. And you feel like that you've not been destroyed. But the God that you serve says, but we have treasure in the earthly vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. But verse 8, he wants you to know. Verse 8 in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 8 says, but we are hard pressed on, eight, on each side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. I said, thank you, God. Because God is helping you and I to understand that life is going to come against you. Things is going to be negatively launched towards you. You are going to go through some hurt, some harms. You will face danger. These things are going to come. These are the personalities and the characteristics of life, of this society, of people. This is how they generate themselves. But God said, because I love you, God said, I will protect you. God said, I will keep you in perfect peace, who mind stay on me. And even though you're going through some situation, even though things don't seem just right, and even though you feel like you've been broken down over here, God said, I have rebuilt you from where you came from. He said, you're now a new creation. All things have washed away. So if you was broken in the past, you were healed now. If you were destroyed in the past, you were healed now. Because when you came to the love and care of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he began to reconcile you. The potter has you in his hands. He's molding you now. Yes. He has you right where you are. I know you was hurt over here, but, but don't worry about that. That's the past of you. I know things didn't work out like you thought it should, but that's the past of you. You are a new creation now. Old things have washed away. God said, you was broken. You was struck down. But you was not destroyed. Thank you, God. Because what evilness and the predators that came against you to break you down, God did not allow it to destroy you. It came to destroy you. It came to break you down. It came to move you away from anything you thought would even happen remotely to make sure that you were going to be loving and caring of God. But because of it, God said, it broke you down. But I'm not going to allow that to destroy you. Because I have a plan for your life. And I have things for you to accomplish. I have places for you to go. I have things in your life that I need for you to move toward, to become successful. And though this situation hurt you, though this situation struck you down, though this situation, it was crushed, heart crushed on every side. Thank like some of our lives were so hard struck on every side. You find yourself crying because it was so hard to even think about how in the world did I make it out of that? How did I get myself in that situation? And it had to have been God to pull me out of this situation. If I was a pastor Mike this morning, I believe that some of the testimonies would have our mouths wide open. But I want you to understand the mouth wide open is just you saying, God, you pulled me out of a situation that I could have never pulled myself out of. Yes, I was broken. Yes, I was struck down. But God said you was not destroyed. Let it go. Whatever it was. Reconcile, let it go. Reconcile, let it go. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. And the life of Jesus also may be manifest in your body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. 
that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. Yeah. He's trying to let you understand every time you wake up, every time you walk outside, every, death is always right there trying to pull you in his direction. But he says, oh, death, <laughs> where is your sting? You can do nothing to my people but get out of the way, for the steps of the righteous are ordered by me, says God. I will send you right through death. Yet yeah, though I walk through the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. His rod and his step that comforts me. God said, I will send you through the midst of death. That's the reason why some of us are still sitting here now. When death came about you, God said, depart from them. Leave them alone. Move away from them. But your friends didn't make it through. Family didn't make it through. But you did what? Because God said, I have a plan for your life. And I need to move you away from this death attack because it came, it came, it came. But since we have the same spirit of faith, we're like 12. So then death is working in us. But life in you, death is working. It's working. It's trying to pull you. It's trying to pull you. Broken, but not destroyed. Broken, but not destroyed. But since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will be present with us with you for all things are for your sake that grace has been spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound in the glory of God but watch this text in the midst of all of this he says do not lose heart even though the outward man is perishing yet the inward man has been renewed day by day I like that part. Yeah. Even though, even though you're going through, even though you're going through, even though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So just because the outward man is people coming against you, they send negative things towards you, they're trying to take from you, they're trying to pull from you, they're trying to steal from you the best you can. You're doing the best you can. Even though the outward man is perishing, you stay focused on God. Yeah. Because the more you stay focused on God, he said the inward man, good God, the inward man is being renewed day by day. But for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for a far more exceedingly and eternal glory of God. Even though you're going through right now, even though you felt like you're so broke that you can't get back up, God says you're not destroyed. Even though things have happened to you, this is just a light affliction. Love your husband like you should. Love your wife like you should. Release you to her. Release him to you. God says love. Love. He says with love and kindness have I even drawn you to me. Move away from this brokenness and stop Use that as a crutch to say, I can't love you because he hurt me. I can't do this because she did this. Get away from that and realize that who you used to be, you are no longer when you came to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, you are a new creation. Old things have washed away. Behold, all things are new. Yes, yes. But look at this part here, verse 18. While we do not look at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, for things which are seen are temporal, temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Saints, while we do not look at things which are seen, because if you focus your attention or fix your eyes on things that's happening here, you look at the news, you get discouraged. You look at people talking about you, wonder if they're talking about you. People gathered in the city, in little circle, you wonder if they're talking about you. Can't go to work for you, wonder what they're doing. Can't come home because you got things going on there. Your mind is so vexed because you're looking at the outward appearance. But if you keep your mind on the eternal, our Lord has saved Jesus Christ. He said, I'll bring you home. He said, I love on you, and I'll keep you covered in perfect peace, who mind has stayed on me. He said, for things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. God says, I love you. I don't know what, what hurt you. I don't know what got you thinking that you're broken. I don't know what has you thinking that God does not love you and he will not move you. But whatever it is, he sent me here to tell you that today you might have been broken, but you was never destroyed. Yes. He rebuilds you. Yes. He put you, he put, he, he said, I blew my breath in you. 
and everything that was unclean in you. He says, I blew it out of you. He says, that belongs to you no more. Stop claiming it. Stop erecting the demons that have been cast out of you. He says, push that mess out of you. Stop going back and revisiting who you used to be. That's who you used to be. Leave it over there and remember over here, I will bless you. Over here, I will receive you. Over here, I love you. Over here, I'll stick closer to you than your own friend. Over here, I'll bless you upon bless you. He said, and he said, I love you. He said, I love this part right here. He said, in John 15 verse 7, he said, to abide in me and my word remain in you, I will give you your heart desire. So what is it that you truly desire? If you abide in Jesus, he said, abide, just abide, just abide in him. He said, if you abide in me and my word remain in you, I'll give you your heart desire. What is it that you desire to have? He says, I'll give it to you. But I cannot give you what you desire. I cannot give you what you want if you keep revisiting the old you. Because I cannot bless you and then you turn around and give it back to Satan because you are reminiscing about the old you. But if you just look at the new you, he says, I got you. I want to, I want to reflect on one more thing. I want to reflect on just one more. He says in verse 8, we are hard pressed on every side, yes, Lord. yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Not in despair means a loss of hope. You, you, you don't have to worry about losing your hope. God has you. Just keep on hoping on the Lord. He said, I got you. Not despair. He said, but persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. God, I thank you. Because had we been destroyed, we would be here today, saints. And some of us, if God would have taken us home in our mess, in heaven, would have never opened open our eyes. So I'm happy that the Lord, he realized, okay, that boy there, or that girl there, let me move in there and pull them out of the married pit they got themselves into and pull them out for my usage. I love the Lord because he could have said, can you imagine if God was like, man, that he would be angry at you for what you just said? Or what you just done, he said, you know what? Forget about you. I go find me somebody else. And all of us sitting in here now would have been in bad shape if he would have said, forget about you. Because all of us have sinned and fell short of the glory. But because we serve a God that says, if you repent, he says, you know what? I see you. And Jeremiah 29 11 says, I have a plan for your life. So he said, let me go in there and pull you out of this mess. And when I pull you out of this mess, there's something about you that I need out of you. He says, let me blow this anointing in you so that you can begin to do the things that I need for you to do. Boldness begins to be part of you. Good God, perseverance begin to come part of you. Anointing begin to come part of you. Why? Because God grew breath in you so that you could do the things that he wants you to do. That's why he says in Luke 9, he said you should lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You should cast out demonic spirit. He says now in Colossians, he said let this mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you. God want you and I to realize I have put dunamis power in you. And that demon that's coming against you, trying to make you think that you're broken, trying to make you think because they did that, you're no longer no good, trying to make you think that you're not perfect in the sight of God, is trying to make you feel less than who you are. But God says, you are a new creation. You were born in my sight, born in my vision, and I made you so perfect that I brought you for a price. So stop allowing that demon to pull you in a direction so that you cannot get the fullness of what God is trying to bless you with. God is ready to give you more than you've ever had before. Wow. He said, he said, he said, go tell them. He said, this is the season of harvest. And if it's the season of harvest, expect God to do what he says he was going to do. In the name of Jesus, for, 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 for 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 9 says, for the Son of God, well, verse 19, you don't have to go down, I want to read it. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us. Preached among you by us. So God said, how can you get the teaching unless you get the preaching? And how can you get the preaching unless he was sent? Many are, many have gone, but few are chosen. God has sent. For Look at verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord, and ourselves your servant, for Christ Jesus' sake. 
God sent the preacher so that you can get an understanding that you can say, amen. I understand what you just said, Pastor. And I can make it now. I can get through this thing now, Pastor. It, it, it had me vexed. It had me crying for no reason. Every time I thought about it, it had me angry. But you know what, Pastor? I can get through this now. Why? Because I know I serve a God that do love me. And had he not loved me, I would be here today. Had he not loved me, I wouldn't be, would be as healthy as I am. I wouldn't have the possession that I have. I believe that the God that I serve does love me. And not only does he love me, but he's still with me. I felt broken because I thought that everything about me that I thought uh, good God, that I was never going to be successful. And I thought everything that I put out there, put my hands to, that I, I failed at, I thought it was just me. I thought I could never be successful at anything. But you don't understand, saints, that demon will pull from you. That demon comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to take from you. And if he can make you fail at everything you do, and you move in that mindset, you are moving away from what God says. You are a new creation. All things are washed away. You shall be successful. I wish above all that you shall prosper and be in good health, even as your soul shall prosper. So if you fail at one thing, say, okay, that's good. But I got to move forward. I can't stay there. I can't stay here. I can't lay down and give up just because I failed at this one thing. I got to keep pushing. I got to keep moving. Good God, you can go through a hundred no's, but just that one yes will change your whole situation. God says persevere. God says keep pushing. God says don't you quit. He says don't lose heart in well doing. For in due season, you're going to reap the harvest if you fight not. Now is not the time to quit. Now is not the time to give up. But now is the time to press. Now is the time to push forward. Whatever God has placed inside of you, hold your head up and keep on moving. So you fail down. Get yourself back up. Throw your shoulders back and realize that the God I serve, he's going to pick me up. He's going to move me. He's going to help me get this situation. And the thing that I like about God, he says, you know what? He said, I'll go before you, my son, my daughter, and I'll make the crooked places straight. And all those things are trying to come against you. All those things are trying to hinder you. All those things are trying to hold you back. He said, I'll straighten it out for you, and I'll move it to the side for you. There's some of that stuff that you're going through, you don't even have to worry about it. And watch this say, God will allow some things to touch you so that you will be able to realize I'm not so perfect. I can't fail. Things will come against me. Realize just how human you are. And you let some things touch you so you can get back on your knees and begin to pray. Because if everything you're going to do, you're so successful at it, you begin to think it's you. So God will let some things touch you so that you can realize, oh, get myself back on my knees and begin to cry out to the God. To God. Lord, thank you for blessing me. Thank you, God, that you work this thing out for me. Thank you, God, that you move for me. And he says, And then when they begin to pull on your coattail, he says, now your gift shall make room for you. You got to realize that the God you serve, he's ready to push you out, get you back in the game so that the people would be able to see and hear what he has pulled you through. Amen. That's why God allows us to get touched sometimes. So that you have a testimony. If it had not been for God on my side, there's no way in the world I would have made it through the situation. He'll put you in places where you can just illuminate and say, you know what? God got me through this. It wasn't no part of mine, but God got me through this. That's why he said this great cloud of witnesses. Are you a witness for what God has done for you? Are you witnessing the people? I don't know how it would have made it. If it had not been for God, I don't know why. I don't know how I would have the things that if it had not been for God, that accident would have taken me out. If it had not been for God, those straight bullets would have hit me in a direction where I would have been crippled for the rest of my life. I even had a cousin, the people were shooting all around him. He, he lay on the ground. And, and, and because he thought that it was time for him to go get his own rifle, he jumped up. And when he jumped up, two bullets hit him in the back and they took him out of this world. Because you don't understand this. When God 
is ready to bring it home. They're not waiting on to come back. Because everybody at this point wants to die and wants to be judged. Saints, I want to ask you this question this morning. Are you really ready to go home to see Jesus? My God, my God. If you're not, it's time today to get it together. Amen. Because nobody knows what tomorrow may bring. Tomorrow might not even come for us. It might not. I can think of at least five people that had plans for the next five years, but tomorrow didn't come for them. So now, let's look at who we are. We are a royal priesthood. We are a peculiar nation. We can do whatever we say. We can make it happen. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We can make this thing happen. We can begin to call things that be not as though it were. We can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We can lay hands on the blind and their sight shall be restored. We can cry out to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ about a situation that you're going through and he will send relief. We can begin to move in a direction that's so horrendous that you can even walk on water. That's how powerful you are. That's how bad you are. That's how dunamis power that you have, that you can have the faith to just walk on water and go and do what God did. But Jesus said, the things that I've done, greater shall you do. But saints, it's all tied up in your faith. That's what it is. It's all tied up in your faith. So if you feel like you've been knocked down, your faith says, not down, but not down. If you feel like he hated you, he did you wrong, everything is coming against you, okay, that's his problem. I got to, I got to I give my account to Jesus. I got to fix me. I got to re, I got to help myself be renewed by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I got to put myself in a position that God can heal me. God can save me. And guess what, saints? He says, I take pleasure. I take pleasure in the prosperity pleasure of my people. Sex, if you were broken after the day, turn it loose. Come on. I don't care if the father wasn't a good father, turn it loose. I don't care if the mother wasn't a good mother, turn it loose. I don't care if you got out against your brother or your sister, turn it loose. Because you're hurting you. You're preventing you from receiving the fullness of God. And saints, I'm telling you, the God that we serve, he will bless you. And Pastor being transparent this morning, me and my father didn't get along well. We didn't get along well at all. There's a lot of things I didn't like about him. But until I reconcile, until I clean up my heart, until I begin to go and reach out and hug him as if he was my father and begin to talk good to my father, God opened up so many doors for me. Good God, he began to bless me so mightily. Why? Because I didn't have that animosity in my heart no more. I didn't have that trash, I call it, in my heart, in my system. I didn't have that in my system. Now, my father and I get along. But guess what? God has blessed me so much that I can now even bless him with the word of God. That's how God says we should be blessed. We should be a blessing. Anytime you walk into a room, you should change the audience of that room. Why? Because you are the lamp of Jesus. You shouldn't go in there with a whole lot of animosity and fussing and arguing and all of that and backbiting and cursing and all of that. Don't even let that profanity come out of your mouth. But when you walk into a place and that place is filled with people, the illumination of God, they should be looking at you like, hey, there's something different about her. There's something different about her. Because you are pregnant. We got to know Jesus. And you know a pregnant lady, she illuminates. She's, she glows. She go why? Because God has pregnancy in her. So when, when the pregnancy of God is in you, when the word of God is in you, you should begin to glow and let people see. And then they run to you and they say, hey, what's different about you? And then you give it to them how good God has been to you, how good God has pulled you out of situations, how God has you where you are right now. He says, and then he says, I thank you for that. God says, I thank you for that. Because anything you go through is not just for you. It's just for you to tell somebody just how good God is. Thanks, surrender to God. God wants to care. God wants to build. 
God wants to gather you and God wants to soar even more into you because he loves you. You were broken, but you were not destroyed. And because you are not destroyed, you can rebuild. Rebuild you. Rebuild you. Read more now. Pray more now. Seek more now. Go to someone and ask for forgiveness now. You can be rebuilt, and when you become more rebuilt, good God, God can use you so mightily. And saints, in closing, he says, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. You will have room enough to receive. And a lot of times, we always equate that with money. But sometimes God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you will have room enough to receive in your body, with your health, with your finances, with the love, with the people around you. He will even mend the fences of your neighbors. He will do all kind of things to make things work out for the best for you because he says, I open up the windows of heaven and I pour out blessings. You will have room enough to receive. I don't know about you, but I don't want my hatred toward her dislike for him to close the window that God is trying to open. Let it be lifted. You know, back in the back in Cumberland County, you know, we say heist the window up here. Let, let, let heist that window up so God can go ahead on and pour blessings out of that window, throw the blessings towards you so you can be able to receive them. And why are you receiving those blessings? He said, now, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. He said, because I want you to bless someone. When I say bless them, give them $2,000, give them $3,000. You're not going to say, God, is this you? He said, because you're going to have more than enough, because that's going to be for your excess. So go ahead and give them what I said, give them. And then and when God says, go ahead and give that person $200, you reach down and you give them $200, you shake hands and say, hey, the Lord told me to bless you with this. I don't know about you, but that's a good feeling. Yeah, that's a good feeling. He's told me to bless you with this. And guess what? When you do what God says, he said, I'm going to restore you mightily for what you've done. Amen. I'm going to restore you mightily for what you've done. What you've done in darkness shall come to light. What you said in secret shall be spoken outwardly. Thank you, God, for a blessed God. That's the God we serve in the name of Jesus. And so, thanks in closing, I want you to understand that you might have been broken but you were not destroyed. Come to Jesus. He says, do not gloat over me, my enemy, though I have fallen. I will arise, though I sit in darkness. The Lord will be my light. Yes, Lord. That's Michael 7 and verse 8. He says, I love you. I love you. I love you. And because he says, I love you, thank you, God, Amen. for loving us. Bless us, God. Yes, Lord. Work it out for us. Yes, Lord. Move like you never before. Amen. And thank you for giving us a way out of being broken. We don't have to do that no more. We love the Lord. He heard our cry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you're not saved, those that are listening by Facebook, if you're not saved and you want to be saved, it's a very easy but simple thing to do. Because he said in Romans 10 and verse 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord God and believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. He said you shall be saved. That's all you need. That we're not going to require you to do no push-ups or run around your living room wherever you are. He's not going to require you to do that. We'll give you an endurance test to see if you're going to make it. And no, he doesn't do all of that. He said if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So with that, I want to give God the praise. Now, if you're not saved and you feel broken, you are not God. So that means that the demon that you're following, you're going to stay broken because that's his personality, that's his characteristics. But if you want to get out of that broken mindset and come on this side of the thing, it's good on this side. God will bless you. So if you would just repeat this prayer after me, then God says you shall be saved. God says in Romans 10 and verse 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord God and believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Say, so you repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. God, your word says I shall be saved. So right now, if you pray that prayer with me, 
You are now saved and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I want you now to get you a Bible-based uh, church. If you're not close to me right now, come on to it. If you are close to me, come on to it. Praise hope. But we believe in loving on the Lord. We believe in giving God his glory. And because of that, this door is open to you and for you. So come on, come on, come on and allow God. And if you just want to send a note to uh, Embrace Hope Facebook page, just do that. We will be glad to read it and be glad to love your love on you. Get you a Bible that you can begin to hear that word and read that word and trust and believe in that word in the name of Jesus. And those of you that's listening just want to do an altar call this morning. I just want to give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. So wherever you are right now, I just want to give God the praise and glory and honor and altar call. You know, back in the day, the old folks used to say, put your hand in the air and read it towards the device that you're using. My mama used to tell me, well, put your hand on the TV when the preacher's praying. But you don't have to do that. You just, just uh, touch and agree with me in the spirit yes. and you'll be okay in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now. I thank you for who you are for what you've done. I thank you for the blessings. I thank you, God, for what you're about to do to your people. And as I sit last night and I download, God, to hear what you were trying to tell me, God, and I told the people this morning that they're broken but not destroyed. Some families are being separated. Some marriages are being dissolved because they feel broken. They feel like there's no way out. But God, you said they may be broken, but they were not destroyed. So because of it, God, go into where they are right now and help them be pulled out of a situation, God, that makes them think they're even broken because you made us, God. In your workmanship, you make us. And because of it, God, I thank you for who you are. And I thank you for what you're about to do even in this place in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that you healed us. Thank you, God, that you moved us. And thank you, God, that you gave us a way out of whatever has come against us in the name of Jesus. So begin to bless us, God. Begin to move on us and begin to work for us, God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to hear your voice and realize that as you're talking to us. And then help us to move quickly, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to move next to Elder. He want to talk to you about giving. On side, we're going to move next towards communion. Listen, if you're at home, if you're at home and you want to partake in communion, get you something to drink. Let's be water or a wine. If you have wine, not fermented wine, but regular wine, apple juice, and get that together. And we begin to move toward, towards communion. And then uh, get you a piece of bread. And then, uh, we're going to break that. We're going to partake in communion. And in the name of Jesus. God says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. That's what we're doing with communion. We're recognizing his body and we're recognizing his blood. And he began to move towards dying on Calvary for us in the name of Jesus. And we serve our awesome God, saints, yes. who has allowed us to partake in something as sacred as this. He left this to us. He left this for us in the name of Jesus. For those of you that's at home, in the name of Jesus, God says, He says, take this bread and break it. He says, take it, eat, eat all of it. This represents my body. He said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Then he took the wine. He says, this wine represents my blood. He says, drink, drink all of it. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And the Bible said he went into the hills of Mount Ida, singing hymns and praises to the Lord. Oh, we serve a right now God. We serve an awesome God. And we serve a God that cares about everything that we're going through. But we're going to shift gears now. And we want to move towards Elder talking to us about financial giving in the name of Jesus. We thank the Lord today for his provision over us. We thank him for communion, the covenant of the blood and the sacrifice of the body. But as we go forth today, we're planting the seed of Christ into the atmosphere here. And so we thank you now in the name of Jesus. 
Uh, you know, the Bible tells us a lot uh, that it's better to give than it is to receive. And, and God shows this to us, again, on this Communion Sunday, that it is better to give as he has given himself that we might be free. So we thank you now for your giving in advance uh, as you're planning in this, uh, in this COVID famine season. You've heard me talk about it. Uh, but God will continue to bless you. So we have several ways, and he has blessed us in a mighty and, 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 and special ways. Uh, probably the easiest way is to go up onto Embrace Hope, uh, Embrace Hope International org, our website, and go into donations, uh, and it'll link you to push pay. Uh, the second easiest way is to go forth on your phone and the text. I always get the numbers messed up. So 77977 is where you would normally put your, your friend's name or somebody else's name, because you know, we don't really necessarily dial uh, or, or put their numbers in there. We, we, we pull it up. Uh, so 77977, uh, and then in the, in the area where you put a message, you put EH Give. Uh, and then it'll link you to push pay, and you can put whatever God has placed upon your heart. Uh, the other couple of ways, uh, as the church was going around with the basket, uh, if you're in person, a place in the basket, they'll give that digital seed. Or you can go up on the website or on the Facebook site, get our address, and mail it in. Or if you're in the local area, you can drop it off into the secure mailbox. And uh, finally, the last way is to call one of the ministerial staff or pastor himself uh, and to, to uh, be able to link up and to be able to give that. But whatever God has placed upon you in this season, know that as we talked about in Bible study, we talked about across the culture today, don't be so afraid of, of the cost of the sacrifice, right? Don't, don't be so afraid of the cost of sacrifice, yet run towards the reward of obedience, and God will continue to bless your seed. But catch this, and we've been talking about this, uh, the, the, the seed that you're placing now is not for the immediacy of now, right? But when, when a farmer goes and plants a seed, the expectation isn't to yield uh, the harvest right there. That yield is yet to come. But what you're living off of now are the seeds that have been planted in the past, right? So, so, so if you don't have a physical or digital seed in this ministry, in this church, we sow in love. So, so if we can just touch it, agree uh, in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ in our heart. Pastor already talked about breaking the hurt, get rid of that hurt, um, uh, and, and, and going forth and allowing God in the midst of where society is, 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 is seeing lack, we're seeing harvest 2020 in this season. If you can touch and agree with me on that and believe in that, then let us go in prayer. Yes, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we're thankful for every heart, every yes. mind, every body and soul that is sold out on a kingdom principle of giving, Father God. In the natural, it doesn't make sense, Father God, but we're asking to see 2020 in the kingdom, Father God. We're asking that you lift the veil and lift the scale and remove the scales from our eyes, Father God. But most importantly, we ask that you open the doors to our heart, Father God. That if we bless you with what you have told us to give you, Father God, that you will open up the windows of heaven, Father God, such that we won't have room enough to receive and that we would be compelled to give. So, Father God, we are thank you for the cheerful giver, Father God, and we're thanking you for meeting us at the point of need and meeting us in love. Now, Father God, we're asking that you multiply this seed, Father God. Not only that you multiply the seed, but Father God, that you give us the wisdom right now in the name of Jesus, that as you are raining down your blessings, Father God, that we will have the wisdom enough, like Jabez, as you enlarge our territory, Father God, that we would know that your hand needs to be upon us to protect yes, us from God. ourselves and to have wisdom to not only reinvest back into the kingdom, but to give to those that are in need. Now, Father God, we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. This is next. I want you to keep Sister Rose, Rosa Jones, in prayer. I lost her grandson. And I want you to keep her in prayer, her and her family, uh, if you would, please. Remember, uh, we have COVID 19 uh, testing here at this building on the 19th, I mean, on, I'm sorry, on Tuesday. One, uh, that's the seventh, uh, from one to seven. So if you want to get tested, it's COVID 19. This is coming down. It's free. Uh, just allow yourself to go through that time frame. Uh, also, does anyone else have anything before we go? Okay. Uh, yes, we just want to um, invite the church home. We will get married here Saturday, July 11th. So we just want to invite the church home to make sure we know when that's it. All right, now he don't put it out. I can run the map. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, next Saturday at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a wedding ceremony here at the house, thanks. Uh, Friday, we're going to do the, uh, we're going to do, get the place together, so it'll be beautiful. And then, uh, I think with silver, silver, ocean blue, and white. Silver, ocean blue, and white will be the colors, and then Lord is going to bless their union as they come here on the 11th, uh, begin to get married. So, happy is a man that finds a wife. For the Bible says you find favor in him. So it's just going to be a blessing to have them to come on down through the altar and let the Lord do what he said he was going to do. And I just bless him. So I just thank the Lord that he allowing us to do this in this house. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, it's yeah. just such a blessing and a privilege. So if you if you can come on down, come on down. Uh, they said it's not going to take long, about an hour maybe of your time. <laughs> I ain't say not that long. About an hour of your time to come on down and just sit in with us. And we begin to do what we want to do. In the name of Jesus. Anyone else have? Yes, ma'am. I wasn't going to say it, but I might as well share it. I want to tell God thank you. Tomorrow, July 6th, Elder and I will have been married for 20 years. Thank you, Lord. All right, all right, all right, all right. Where's your anniversary? Tomorrow, July 6th, Elder and I will have been married for 20 years. July the 16th, we've been married 20 years. 20 years. I made it to 20th. I finally made it to 20th. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So now, anyone else have anything else you want to put out before we close? 22 years. 20 years. Thank you, Lord. Just a blessing. And we still have our staff. Motivation, motivation, motivation. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Listen, if I can get everyone, if you would please stand, <laughs> we can do the benediction. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Now, I don't want to call on Wednesday to tell my pastor I changed my back. Oh. <laughs> in the name of, And listen, uh, Wednesday, 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 Elder's doing an awesome job with Bible study. He's doing an awesome job. He's telling you, he's telling you about the 12 tribes of Israel. So now, uh, if you get that opportunity, please, and if we always, uh, well, you pastor always said our reminders, we're about to go live on Bible study on Facebook. So listen, lock in, lock in so that you can hear what's going on uh, with uh, the 12 tribes. Elder is doing an awesome job at Bible study. So Elder, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for that awesome word. He's well taught, he's well knowledged in what he's doing, well versed. And what he's doing, and he's putting that information out. So bring your get wherever you are, get your paper, get your pen, and go ahead on and let the Lord do what he's going to do as far as educating us so that God can begin to bless us continuously. Keep doing what you're doing, saints. We love you for that. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you that you blessed us today, God, to move just a little further in life. In the name of Jesus, for you woke us up this morning and you closed us in our right mind, gave us the mind to praise, gave us the mind to give you the glory in the name of Jesus. So God, continue to move on us. And all of our members, God, is not here, some even out of town. Bless them, God, when they come down the road, God. Bless them as they begin to come down 95. Keep them covered in your blood. Bless them, Lord God, as wherever they are. Bless them as they begin to come back home. In the name of Jesus, strengthen us, God. But Father, as we leave here today, bind all mechanical failure and let the hurt, harm, and danger come through us and keep us covered under your blood. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And go in peace. Hallelujah.